good Josh Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out hidden secrets behind 20 iconic WWE finishers. This should actually be an interesting one, man. Uh, a good wrestler finisher is definitely uh something that can enhance said wrestler, uh definitely can enhance the match as this final point that's happening, you know. And it's just it's always good to have a good one because then when the fans see it usually they get excited about it get a nice little pop like oh the match is over here so we're gonna check out how they do some of these infamous uh wwe finishers to make people you know safe while they're doing them you know because you don't want to actually injure the person you try to do it make it look painful and look impactful but you're not trying to actually send the person to the gulags legitimately so we're gonna check this out it's about wrestlemania let's get right into this one have you ever wondered how some of the most iconic wrestling moves are performed well, the art of pro wrestling takes years to perfect and master, and delivering pro wrestling moves should be exclusively left to the professionals. Of course. However, there are secrets to legendary moves that need to be implemented to keep a move safe and ensure that both wrestlers involved in the move perform it safely and don't suffer oh a serious injury. Gosh. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at the secret behind 20 of the most iconic and famous moves in WWE. Should be a good one, man. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 20, the super kick. Mm. And whilst the super kick is now one of the most overused moves in overused pro wrestling, is not the even move a word. needs to be delivered with a degree of caution. The most famous wrestler to ever deliver the move was Shawn Michaels, whose of version course. of the move known as Sweet Chin Music. If contact is made, then the wrestler should have their hands up to cushion the blow. Additionally, a lot of modern wrestlers aim their kicks towards the shoulder or chest and the kick should be delivered lightly so the move causes as little damage as possible. A wrestler <laughs> delivering the move is also prone to slapping their thigh, which makes mm -hmm. an emphatic sound. However, it's worth noting that this has received extensive criticism in recent years yeah. and a number of wrestlers prefer not to incorporate a thigh slap. Number 19, Crossroads. Only because it's like, you know, it's so visible. Like back then they had like the sleight of hand on how they did it. So it, it didn't even, like you didn't even realize they're sl slapping their thigh. But now a lot of wrestlers, they, you know, get ridiculed for it. Especially from people who actually, you know, been watching wrestling so long. You can see someone visibly slapping their thigh to make the sound effect. It's like, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it takes it, it. You can tell. You can see the illusion. You shouldn't be able to see the illusion in, of the, the super kick, if that makes any sense. It should be something that's fluid. You don't really notice it, but a lot of times you can tell. Crossroads, as performed by WWE Love star Cody Rhodes, is one of the most popular finishing moves in modern wrestling. The move looks complicated to perform, but it's fairly simple. The individual taking the move simply rotates and performs a front face bump. Uh -huh. The move is hard to get wrong, and some wrestlers even opt to spike their own head when taking the move. This has been seen in Rhodes' matches with the likes of Chad Gable. This is yep. the pathetic sell of the move, but shouldn't mm -hmm. be attempted by those who are just starting to learn their craft. Number 8. The Hurt Lock Bobby Lashley's Hurt Lock finisher was popularized by Chris Masters in the Ruthless mm -hmm. Aggression Era. The secret to the submission move is all about the pressure. When applying the move, a little pressure should be applied, and as long as the move still looks legitimate, it passes as a credible looking move. If the wrestler is expected to escape the hold, then that wrestler in question will usually only apply a tiny bit of pressure. This will allow the wrestler to easily escape it. Yeah. Submission moves of this nature need to be sold with conviction and meaning or the secret is just going to be exposed to the entire fan base. Mm -hmm. Number 17, the Tombstone Piledriver. So at this point, one of the most devastating at that point is it comes to it comes down to the wrestler just being able to sell it to make it look that devastating. Eating yet iconic moves in WWE history is the Tombstone Piledriver. This was perfected by The Undertaker, as the mm -hmm. move can be dangerous, but if it's performed by a professional such as the Dead Man, no harm will come to the opponent. The wrestler's head should never touch the mat when delivering the move, and in order to make sure the Dead Man doesn't drop his opponent, the opponent will wrap their arms around the Dead Man, giving themselves a ton of support when he eventually falls hard onto his knees. Mm -hmm. For the move to work, it requires a ton of cooperation, but as long as both wrestlers are on the same page, everything should be absolutely fine. Number 16. Yeah, it can definitely be dangerous if not performed correctly. <laughs> the Styles Clash. 
The Styles clash has caused a number of injuries oh, throughout oh the move's existence. God. And the main reason for this is that certain wrestlers have taken the move oh. completely the wrong way. Oh. When AJ Styles gets his opponent in the position to slam them into the mat, the opponent must not under any circumstances tuck oh. their chin in. This can lead to a broken neck. Oh. The issue is that it's a wrestler's instinct to tuck their chin in during a match. So this likely explains oh. why so many injuries have occurred. James Ellsworth notably discussed this during Eric Bischoff's podcast and stated, It's just that instinctive, like, you know, wrestler thing of tuck your chin. And that's the one move you don't do it on. And uh, I felt so bad about it, like, like afterwards. Cause, you know, and they were all cool about it and everything. Because, you know, it looked good on TV. It looked like it killed me. So... Not like it looked like bad or anything, but you know, it's just oh. was that instinct of so, fucking oh. and been, you know, told to do it for 14 years, and oh. that was, you know, I, that's all it was. But I was okay, it was fine. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't get hurt, obviously. And uh, AJ, like I, like I said earlier, in my humble opinion, is the best in the world, and he knows how to adjust to things, and um, everything, you know, was okay afterwards. Bro, that move is always so scary. Oh my god, oh. Woo cringe inducing it looks like a painful finisher bro you gotta know what you're doing bro that's crazy number 15 the stf oh man john cena's version of the stf is often criticized as cena greatly exposes how the move is performed safely yeah the lower leg of the opponent should be loosely locked behind the leg of the wrestler delivering the move then the wrestler delivering the move should then apply a face lock style submission that applies little to no pressure if this was applied for real, it would cause extreme anguish. So mm -hmm. it's all about being cautious with the move and limiting how much pressure is applied. Number 14, the German suplex. German Ooh. suplexes are very common in modern wrestling, but there is a trick in making sure the move is executed as safely as yeah. possible. The wrestler taking the move should aim to land on their back or upper shoulder region, but sometimes they have a horrible Ooh. landing and land right on their head or neck. According to WWE legend Mick Foley on his podcast, he hates German suplexes. And this comes from a man who was thrown off the top of the hell in a cell. Facts. Foley stated, I'm just, I don't like German suplexes. I think that over time, they shorten careers. They do. And they destroy the quality of life. So people can attack me for that. Uh, one, you know, the little margin for error. I'd yeah. say there's more margin for error on the German suplex but that it's just over time. It's going to mm -hmm. wear you out. You Number 13, suplex. Anything dealing with neck region, upper shoulder region, you take those bumps over time, eventually your body's not going to be able to handle that. You know, you may end up having to get surgery. One of the most fundamental moves in wrestling is the suplex. The suplex is performed thanks to clear cooperation between mm -hmm. the two wrestlers and the wrestler taking the move will usually post their hand on the wrestler's side which allows them to flip over and take the suplex bump. In relation to the wrestler delivering the move, they will keep their hand under the wrestler's chin. This protects the wrestler's neck and ensures they land completely safe. Mm. Number 12, the F5. Woo. The F5 is an iconic finisher that Brock Lesnar debuted all the way back in 2002. The move involves Lesnar performing a fireman's carry before spinning his opponent in the air and making them land on their front. Mm -hmm. The move is incredibly safe as Lesnar when performing the move will release his opponent in a way that allows them to execute a safe landing. Not that it hasn't happened before, but it's quite hard for oh, a wrestler oh. to land on their head when taking the move. That is, as long as the wrestler delivering the move is someone of a skilled caliber. Jeez. Number 11, The Widow's Peak. Whenever Victoria hit a Widow's Peak finishing move, the crowd would audibly gasp because it looked so bro, devastating. I don't lie to, to you. That, that, that is a cold finisher, bro. That finisher is actually kind of that whole cold, bro. Is that the wrestler taking the move will fall to their knees and Victoria will loosely hold their chin. And this keeps the wrestler's neck completely Ooh. safe. This applied in a quick motion makes the move look sinister, but in reality, it's incredibly safe when delivered correctly. Due Definitely to the nature cool. of the move, it allows the wrestler taking the move to deliver their own unique cell. And some of the cells of the finishing move have been unbelievably Not the impressive. Matches. <laughs> the, razor's edge, the razor's edge finishing move is impressive visually, and it's a shame mm -hmm. that wrestlers are reluctant to use the move. Sheamus uses a version of the move known as the High Cross, which he now uses sporadically and is yeah. mainly kept for big matches. Mm -hmm. but the move begins with a wrestler placing their opponent's head between their legs, and the wrestler delivering the move will then lift their opponent over his shoulders in a cross position over his head. The secret behind the move is by performing a standard back bump with the wrestler putting their arms out, 
but some wrestlers have awkwardly landed on their head, yeah. which is certainly not the way oh. to land. Number nine, the frog splash. Love Eddie this Guerrero move right here. Eddie Guerrero and Rob Van Dam both popularized the frog splash, and the move is still used in modern WWE Ooh. by the likes of Kevin Owens and Montez, Montez Ford, Ford to perform the move. Montez safe. Ford has a beautiful frog splash, and surprisingly, Logan Paul, his frog splash, he gets very great. Like this vertical leap, the form looks great, looks very impactful when he hits someone. Briefly though, the wrestler delivering the move should look to land on their knees and forearms, which means ultimately they will be taking the majority, if not all, of the impact. The wrestlers taking the move needs to keep look their arms in tight. This is to ensure that their arm doesn't take the brute force of the landing. Number 8, Walls of Jericho. The Walls of Jericho is perhaps one of the most well-known submission moves of all time. Mm -hmm. Chris Jericho's version of the Boston Crab has one main secret though, and it comes down to pressure. When Jericho gets a grip of his opponent's legs, he barely applies any pressure. The reason that the move looks so painful comes down to the opponent's effective selling. Mm -hmm. The opponent has to sell the move as if they're in absolute agony, and that's how the move is going to be seen by the audience as a credible, legitimate submission hold. Mm -hmm. yep. Number 7, The Body Slam. One move that is featured in 99% of matches <laughs> is the body slam. It's one of the first moves that is taught to students at wrestling school and the mechanics of the move are rather simple. The wrestler taking the body slam will use their hand to post on the wrestler's leg. This allows the wrestler delivering the move to safely lift them up and slam them to the mat. Mm -hmm. This makes the wrestler a lot lighter and it's how smaller wrestlers Bro, are able Cesaro to slam super heavyweights. Picking Big Show up, I believe that was WrestleMania 30. Uh, I think the first um, Andre Battle uh, Royal, him doing that was very impressive. Got a huge pop. Thought they were going to do something with Cesaro here. They didn't, unfortunately, uh, long term. But this was still an impressive moment. It's also common for the wrestler delivering the move to realign their head to the back of their opponent's head. This ensures that the wrestler lands back first and avoids having a horrific landing on their neck or head area. Ooh. Number six, the leg drop. Now, the wrestler for making the leg drop famous is Hulk Hogan, of course. but even he has to admit that it hurts the wrestler giving the move way more than the wrestler taking it. In the kayfabe world, it's explained that the move is performed with the wrestler landing on their opponent's neck, but obviously, if this was actually happening, there would be grave consequences. Mm -hmm. Instead, the wrestler delivering the move will land on top of their opponent's chest, but without full-blown contact. When the wrestler sits down for the leg drop, they will land with their leg bent, meaning that they themselves mm -hmm. take the majority of the impact. Number five, GTS. And I believe Hulk Hogan has said that's probably the move that's, you know, caused him the most pain later in his years, you know. Whenever a wrestler such as CM Punk delivers a GTS, it always looks painful to take, but there is a secret to perfecting the move and keeping it safe. When the wrestler taking the move is about to hit the knee, they should already have their feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. Then within the matter of moments, the wrestler should turn their head and safely land their head on the wrestler's cushion knee pad. The wrestler will then perform a back bump to sell the impact mm -hmm. of the perceived brutality. Hey, Dolph the this hell be a out of that one. To understand and should only be attempted Bop. by trained professionals. Bro, Dolph, Number four, the Dolph be selling the hell out of that GTS, just be flopping all over the place. Pedigree. If a wrestler can take a front face bump, then they can master the cell of Triple H's pedigree. Classic moment right here. To execute here. the move, the wrestler delivering the pedigree must let go of the wrestler's arms, and this allows the wrestler taking the move to fall safely. Mm -hmm. In relation to the person taking the move, all they have to do is simply kick their legs out and land with a traditional front face bump. The key is to land as flat as possible to avoid landing in an awkward position. Mm -hmm. Some wrestlers such as Kane prefer to land on their knees. Whilst this is much safer, the long-term damage of this type of bump is severe. Mm -hmm. Number 3. The Choke Slam Upon a choke slam being set to be delivered, the first thing to remember is that the wrestler delivering the move should make no legitimate contact with the throat. They should have their grip on the opponent's chest, and if they insist on having a throat grip, under no circumstances should any pressure be applied. The wrestler giving the move will then throw out their opponent's arm, so their mm -hmm. armpit is basically resting on their shoulder. This allows the wrestler taking the move to elevate themselves up for the move as high as they want to go. The wrestler taking the move will then jump and perform yep. a back bump, and the wrestler delivering the move has to do very little, mm -hmm. but sometimes a grab of the type should be encouraged so that the wrestler can get extra momentum. Number two, coup de gras. Ooh. It's common belief amongst wrestlers that Finn Balor's coup de gras is one of the most painful moves to take. It looks the move painful. sucks in the sense that it's going to hurt no matter what, but there is a certain way Balor can land that can reduce the pain. Balor can land on his back almost immediately after coming off the top rope. 
This means that most of the impact is taken on his back rather than going through his feet. This is unfortunately the only way of keeping the move safe, and a move of this caliber should mainly be left to those wrestlers with decades yeah. of experience, such as the inaugural WWE Universal Champion. I ain't gonna lie to you, when he did the coup de gras in that Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania against Edge, and he went feet first through the table... That definitely looked like it hurt him like hell. <laughs> that was crazy. And number one, the RKO. To perform the RKO, it's all about timing. Mm -hmm. When the wrestler delivering the move locks in the reverse headlock, or the both cutter. wrestlers need to perform their distinct bumps at the exact same time. The wrestler delivering the move needs to jump forward Woo. and deliver a back bump, whereas the wrestler taking the move needs to safely perform a front face bump, and they can even throw in some height on the bump by performing a Ooh. jump. Some wrestlers such as Rob Van Dam and Ricochet have a <laughs> spike style bump, which yep. is a much more complex Bink. way of taking the move and can lead to injury if not done correctly. <laughs> but they have it, folks, the secret. Oh man, this was a great video. I love videos like this that kind of show how things are done or whatnot and it has respect for the business not to expose it it's just more so tidbits on how these wrestlers actually you know take these uh these bumps and these moves man so comment down below and let me know what's your favorite wrestling finisher of all time that you feel like looks brutal looks impactful looks like it could legitimately end a match or if you tried it on someone it would legitimately hurt them let me know down below but i appreciate all love and support you guys have shown on channel road to 150k and I'm still in the speed of YouTube wrestling channel.